by three sums of radicals. When we are adding these radicals or subtracting them, we are simplifying them as much as we possibly can. And then from there, we're just combining like terms like we do with variables. So we look at the first example, A. We have the square root of 8 plus the square root of 98. We know the square root of 8. We can do 2 and 4. The 4 is 2 and 2. So this is going to turn into 2 square root 2. For the 98, we have um, 2 times 49. And then the 49 is 7 and 7. So this would be turned into 7 square root 2. Because the square root of 2 is the same, we're going to keep that just like it, if it was a variable. And then add the 2 and the 7. 2 plus 7 is 9. So 9 square root 2 is our solution. For B, we have the cube root of 81 minus the cube root of 24. The cube root of 81 we know 9 and 9, the 9 is 3 and 3, the 9 is 3 and 3. So we're looking for groups of 3. So this is going to be 3 cube root 3 minus whatever we get when we do the cube root of 24. 24 is 4 and 6. The 4 is 2 and 2. The 6 is 2 and 3. Sets of 3, we have a 2. So this is going to be 2 cube root 3. Our radicals are the same. They are both the cube root of 3. So we're going to do 3 minus 2, which is 1 cube root of 3, which is just the cube root of 3. For C, we have the, the square root of 32 over 3 plus the square root of 2 over 3. So again, we're going to keep this as the square root of 32 plus the square root of 2 all over the square root of 3 because those denominators are the same. We can do this. So the square root of 32, 32 is 4 and 8. 8 is 2 and 4. We have a set of 4s here. So this is going to be 4 square root 2. I don't want it to look like. There we go. 4 square root 2. And then we have the square root of 2 all over the square root of 3. So 4 plus 1 is going to be 5 square root 2 all over the square root of 3. We have that square root of 3 on the denominator, which we do not want. So we have our invisible index of 2. So we need 2 square roots of 3 in order to get rid of the radical and just be 3 on the denominator. So we can do the same to the top. So it's going to be 5 square root 6 all over 3. For D, we have the square root of 18 plus the square root of 12. So we are going to find the prime factorization of 18. We have 3 and 6. 6 is 3 and 2. So this is going to be 3 square root 2 plus the square root of 12. We have 4 and 3. 4 is 2 and 2. So that's 2 square root 3. You cannot combine these because they don't have like terms based off of their radicals. So you need to leave it alone. So it's just the 3 square root 2 plus 2 square root 3. It's not always going to work out to where we have the same radical or the radical of the same number. If we look at example 2a, we are simplifying this by distribution. So we have the square root of 6 times the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3. So we're going to distribute. We're going to do the square root of 6 times 2 plus the square root of 6 times 3. Now we can do this one of two ways. We know that we have to find the square root of these, so we can rewrite this as the 6 of 2 times 3, keep the, the times 2, and then the same thing with the other one, 2 times 3 times 3. We're looking for groups of 2. We have a 2, so, so we have 2 square root 3 for this one, and then we have the 3, so it's going to be 3 square root 2 for that one. And then we're done, because they're not like terms, because they don't have the same radicals. Now, you could have also done 6 times 2 is 12, square root of 12, plus 6 times 3 is 18, square root of 18, and then gone that route as well. It's totally up to you. 
for example b we have the square root of 21 plus the square root of 15 all over the square root of 3. so we're going to get do this by looking at the factors of 21 and 15. your prime factorization of 21 is just 3 times 7. you can't do anything with that. 15 is 3 times 5. again you can't do anything with that. so we're going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. When we do this, we're going to put parentheses around that numerator and distribute in the square root of 3. So again, we can rewrite this as the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 times 7. So that way we have the prime factorization of that 21 there. Plus the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 times 5. This is going to end up as the square root of 3 times 3 times 7 plus the square root of 3 times 3 times 5. We're looking for groups of 2. We have 2 here, so it's going to be 3 square root 7, plus we have another set of 2 there, 3 square root 5. For our next set of examples, C, we have the radical of 3 times the square root of 3 plus the square root of 6. So again, we can rewrite this as the square root of 3 times 3 plus the square root of 3 times 6. That 6 is 2 times 3. So again, this is 2, so this is just going to be 3 plus the square root of 3 times 3 times 2. We're looking for groups of 2. We have one there, so it's going to factor out to be 3 plus 3 square root 2. For d, we have the square root of 2 times 2 minus the square root of 2. So again, we're going to do the square root of 2 times 2, which is 2 square root 2, minus the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is the square root of 2 times 2, which is going to give us 2 square root 2 minus 2. For example, 3, we're simplifying and assuming that each radical expression represents a real number. So if we look at example A, we have the square root of 12 x to the fifth power minus x times the square root of 3x cubed plus 5 squared, or sorry, 5x squared times the square root of 3x. So we are going to simplify these as we go. So we're going to rewrite it as the square root of 12 times the square root of x to the fifth minus x times the square root of 3 times the square root of x cubed plus 5x squared times the square root of 3 times the square root of x. So the square root of 12, 12 is 2 and 6, 6 is 2 and 3, sets so of 2, so this is going to be 2 square root 3. The x to the fifth, divide that by 2, it's going to be x squared square root x. Then we're going to have a negative x square root 3 times x square root x, I'm sorry, times the square root of x cubed. And divide that by 2, we're going to have x times the square root of x. So x times x, this x times this negative x is going to be negative x squared times the square root 3 times the square root of x. Next, we have the 5x squared times the square root of 3 times the square root of x. So well, that's just going to be 5x squared times the square root of 3 times the square root of x. All right, so now let's put this all back together. 2 times the square root of 3 times x squared times the square root of x is going to be 2x squared square root 3x. Then we have a negative x squared times the square root of 3 times the square root of x, which is just going to be negative x squared square root 3x. Then we have 5x squared times the square root of 3 times the square root of x, which is just square root 3x. Now, square root 3x, square root 3x, square root 3x. Combine like terms. The 2x squared minus the x squared is x squared x squared plus 5x squared are going to be 6x squared square root 3x. 
there we go. For b, we have the square root of 6y minus the square root of 3y over the square root of 2. So in order for us to have like denominators to subtract these two, we first have to get rid of that radical 2 in our denominator. So we're going to first multiply top and bottom here by the square root of 2 of that second fraction. This is going to leave us with the square root of 6y minus the square root of 6y over 4. That 6y that we first started with has a denominator of 1 right now. So actually, this is 2. I'm sorry. This is 2. There we go. This is 1. All right. So we have to have the same denominators in order to subtract. So we're going to multiply each of these first fraction numerator and denominator by 2. So this is going to be 2 square root 6y minus square root 6y all over 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. So we're just going to have the square root of 6y over 2. For C, we have 6, I'm sorry, the square root of 6w times the square root of 3w plus the square root of 2w cubed. So we are going to distribute here. We, this is a different way that I did it from before. So I'm going to do 6 times 3, which is 18. So the square root 18, w times w is w squared. Plus 6w times 2w cubed is going to be 6 times 2, which is 12. Keep it under the radical. W times W cubed is W to the fourth. So now from here, we're going to simplify. So the 18, we have 3 and 6. 6 is 3 and 2. So this is going to be 3, the W squared. Divide the exponent by 2. It's just going to be W. And keep the 2 underneath. This 2 stays underneath. The 12 is 2 and 6. The 6 is 2 and 3. The 4 gets divided by 2, so this is 2w squared. Keep the 3 underneath the radical. From here, do we have like or like um, terms based off of those radicals? No. You have a square root of 2, you have a square root of 3. So your answer for this one is just going to be 3w square root 2 plus 2w squared square root 3. For D, we have 10, the square root of 10a minus the square root of 5a over the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2a over the square root of 5. So I'm going to just rewrite this to be the square root of 10a over 1 minus the square root of 5a over the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2a over the square root of 5. Like denominators, but first get rid of those radicals. Top and bottom of this middle fraction, square root 2. Top and bottom of the last fraction, square root 5. From here, we're going to have the square root of 10a over 1 minus the square root of 10a over 2 plus the square root of 10a over 5. So our least common denominator here is 10. So we're going to multiply everything by what it takes to make the denominator 10. So this one's going to be by 10. This is going to be by a 5. And then the last one will be by a 2. So we're going to have 10 square root 10a minus 5 square root 10a plus 2 square root 10a all over 10. From here, combine like terms. 10a, 10a, 10a. All of our radicals are the same for these. So from here, we are going to combine those like terms. The 10 minus 5 plus 2. 10 minus 5 is 5. 5 plus 2 is 7. So this is going to leave us with 7 square root 10a all over 10.